first time ever Latinos are going to be the top minority for the presidential election. And Alex Trebek has a shocking announcement for the Jeopardy viewers. Plus, today the baseball world is in mourning over the death of an upcoming star. All this and more, OC News starts right now. Welcome, thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Gunnar Texera. And I'm Rachel Andrews. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. As the 2020 presidential election approaches, many people are trying to decide who they will vote for. The California Democratic Party's conference in Long Beach this past weekend serve as the perfect place for the Latino community to decide. Arguably the biggest year of a generation. When it comes to immigration reform, um, what we're doing with racism and all these different things that are going on around the country, I just think the president we have right now isn't addressing those things very well. It is the year of the census, the year of the presidential election, and the year of the Latino voter. The Latino community is expected to become the top minority in next year's race making for a nearly 20% increase from the 2016 election and a 6% increase of coming-of-age voters, just like Kenya Castillo. Yeah, this is the first time, yes. Yet, with 18 candidates currently in the running, choosing one can feel like getting lost in the mall. I think the new generation is getting really excited in politics, and it's great to see because of what's happening in this country. People feel like their communities are under attack. That's why onlookers such as Castillo are just window shopping for now. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and uh, Joe Biden. And I think their interests are, are the ones I'm kind of looking for so far, but I haven't really decided yet. It may be tricky for some to choose the best Democrat because for Latino voters, policy goes beyond immigration. And voting is not as simple as one issue. With climate change, with minimum wage, with better education, I, you know, as a college student, I think about, you know, if I'm going to have to worry, I'm going to pay out of pocket. Yet, the year of the Latino is a battleground enlightened by fear mongering from President Trump, which makes children such as six year old Ariana Gonzalez interested in voting for issues that affect immigrants. Um, my grandma is from Mexico and she speaks Spanish. Polls have said that there are still 36% of Latinos who have not declared who they will vote for. At least Ariana is hopeful that she will see Elizabeth Warren in the White House. So what made you want Elizabeth? Because she's a woman. Reporting for OC News, I'm Katie DeFalco. A shooting in Fresno has left four dead and six wounded. Two gunmen sneaked into a backyard and began shooting at a group of over 30 friends and families gathered to watch a football game Sunday night. The Fresno Police Department is speculating that the shooting could be linked to an Asian gang violence and believed it was a threat targeted attack. About 16 men were in the backyard when the gunfire began, while several women and children were inside the residency. First responders received multiple calls about the attack and reached the home around 8 p.m. Three men were found dead and the four Fourth men later died while in surgery. Six other victims survived non-threatening gunshot wounds and two currently remain hospitalized. No suspect is available and police are working to gather surveillance footage from surrounding homes. Chick-fil-A has dropped several donations to organizations that oppose same-sex marriage after receiving backlash from LGBTQ rights activists. Through the past several weeks, the popular U.S. fast food chain explains that they will no longer donate to the Salvation Army and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which both do not support same-sex marriage. Chick-fil-A has had a long history of receiving backlash from LGBT rights groups for years. After the fast food chain CEO, Dane Cathy, publicly said he supported, quote, the biblical definition of the family unit marriage only between a man and a woman. Chick-fil-A told ABC News they will refocus its donations to groups centered on hunger, homelessness, and education in the new year. Coming up, find out which beauty mogul sold half of their company for a pretty penny. Also, tune in to see how USPS is making holiday wishes come true through the magic of mailing letters. Why I 
Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Twitter's is, Twitter is known for its meme culture and light humor. CEO Jack Dorsey wants to keep it that way. Twitter will globally ban the promotion of political content and ads from political figures. The intent is to, to free emphasize expression and not allow politics to pay for publicity, says CEO Dorsey. This decision is getting mixed reviews. President Donald Trump's 2020 presidential ca campaign manager, Brad Parscale, tweeted it was an attempt to silence Trump and conservatives. Regardless of the backlash, these policies will go into effect November 22nd. Users will be able to keep enjoying the memes without the political ads on their timeline. It's that time of year again, and kids all over the world are preparing to write their letters to Santa. But first, find out what streaming service is increasing price. Our reporter Angie Linzaga has more in this world of tech. Thanks, guys. From the new Disney Plus to Netflix now hosting Nickelodeon shows, these aren't the only changes streaming, coming to streaming services. Hulu announced this weekend that they will be increasing the price of their live TV streaming plan from $49.99 to $59.99. Hulu currently streams 60 live channels including ESPN and CNN and has about 29 million paid subscribers. According to a Hulu blog post, the increase in price will allow the service to continue to offer popular live news, sports, and entertainment programming. This is the second time the streaming service has increased its price. The new cost will take effect starting December 18th. You can make a child's Christmas wish come true with the help of USPS. It's a Christmas miracle! USPS is launching Operation Santa, where you can adopt a child's letter and make their dreams come true. With kids all over the world preparing to write letters to send to the North Pole, USPS has developed an online system to help children in need. Letters of low-income children will be posted on the USPS official website starting today. To read and adopt a letter, you can visit the official site at USPSOperationSanta.com. Just remember, the gift needs to be mailed by December 20th. And that's all for the world of tech. I'm Angie Linzaga. Now back to you at the desk. Thanks, Ange. Taco Tuesday on a Monday? For our reporter Danielle Embud, she went to the iHeartRadio Taco Fest to see what everybody was tacoing about. Radio hosted their fifth annual Taco Fest in Riverside, California. They had over 10 taco stands, eight headliner performers, and multiple games to win concert tickets, six flag passes, t-shirts, and free tacos. This is my first year here. I, I didn't know what to expect when I first got here, but as we walked in, um, security was so nice. We didn't kind of know what to do, but everybody led us to um, the ticket booth. We got, so you do your little 20, 21 or over wristbands. You get to the drinking part. Um, you get tickets, do some alcohol, chill. We kind of walked around. There's, it's such like a family day. Like you bring your family, you do raffles. Um, there's a whole bunch of different people who do the concerts. So there's everybody doing concerts, um, different prizes, games. It's fun for all ages. We had such a blast, and I cannot wait to come next year. This family and friends event happens every year as well as others. The Taco Fest also helps the community come together and participate in fun activities iHeartRadio puts on these events to help promote themselves and their music. There is no better way to do that than with tacos. Uh, taco Maps. Taco Maps is a, a, an app that helps you find your perfect taco, right? So a lot of times, you know, um, there's a lot of taco spots, but maybe we're looking for like a vegan taco, vegetarian taco, or a specific meat, right? So we created an app to help people to help people find their perfect taco. Not only can you eat good tacos, but you can use an app to help find the most perfect one for you. The Taco Fest has become a huge success in the Inland Empire, and iHeartRadio hopes to continue making this an annual event. Their next festival will be in May, and will have more games, prizes, and performers. This will be an event you won't want to miss. Titans, I hope that gave you something to talk about. Be sure to check out iHeartRadio's next event by following them on all their social media. I'm Daniela Boo reporting for OC News. 
There are many dietary choices you can make in your life. You can choose to become vegan or you can choose not to be. Our reporter Jomar Jaramillo takes a look into someone's decision to walk away from the vegan diet. Power, strength, and determination. The true characteristics of a bodybuilder. Every morning at 6 a.m., Lizbeth Ortiz wakes up to head to the gym as she is on her journey to become a bodybuilder. After a year and a half of dedicating herself to living a vegan life, Ortiz decided it was time to step away. It was just not beneficial for my body and what I wanted to do. And I know that I had certain goals such as I wanted to build more muscle and I really wasn't getting that protein intake from a vegan diet. With a lack of protein intake, Ortiz was consuming a high level of soy, which began to concern her. And the reason why I went vegan was for my health, and the reason why I stopped was for my health. As a semi-vegetarian, she is starting to reintroduce eggs and fish into her diet. Trainer and owner of Phenomenal Nutrition, Tony Mena, believes in eating healthier foods rather than using supplements. We all need food, and once people realize that carbs and protein is needed in their diet, then they'll be a lot more successful with weight loss. Sister Joanna Ortiz could hardly contain her excitement when asked how she felt over her sister's return to eating some meat. I like it. Now we could go to San Pedro and we could eat, you know, she's not so picky about the food or cross-contamination because she knows that she's not a real vegan. As she continues to train, she's hoping to get into weightlifting competitions by the end of this year. I'm Joe Maharamio for OC News. Okay guys, we need to calm down. It looks as though this former country artist will be able to form her hit songs that kickstarted her career at the American Music Awards. And how much money are these three Jeopardy contestants playing for? All this and more with our reporter Joe Maharamio on entertainment. Good news for Taylor Swift and all her Swifties. Music sensation Taylor Swift has just reached a deal allowing her to perform early songs at the AMAs this year. She is being honored as the Artist of the Decade at the award show along with her live performance. This all comes after the public dispute earlier this week where Swift disclosed she was denied approval to perform her early hits. The AMAs will air November 24th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on ABC. How much will the Jeopardy winner win? What is $1 million? That's right, these three top Jeopardy contestants are making their brain power out as they are competing for the game show's biggest prize. The game show will make all three contestants compete in a series of matches where the first player to win three matches will be crowned the greatest of all time and take home the $1 million. It doesn't look so bad for the other two contestants as they will also be awarded $250,000 each. Alec Trebek has stated this will set the record straight on who is the best of the best. It will start airing January 7th. Kylie Jenner just became $600 million richer. Kylie Jenner has sold her company. Well, not really. She sold the majority share of her company, Kylie Cosmetics, to Cotty, Inter Cotty Incorporated. Cotty purchased 51% of Kylie Cosmetics, making them the majority owner of the company with the goal to expand the lip kits and Kylie skin worldwide. Kylie has said she will remain as the creative director to her brand, and this move will allow her to focus time on creating new products. And that's all for entertainment. I'm Joma Haramio. Back to you. Thank you, Jomar. Fullerton hosted a night of fun with live entertainers and even gave students the opportunity to participate and express themselves unapologetically. Every Fullerton's fifth annual drag show was filled with pizzazz and a whole lot of sass, attracting a number of people at the housing piazza. Hi, my name is Exotica Erotica. I am the queen of the OC. Um, I travel all over Southern California to perform all over the place. I've been doing drag for about 10 years now and um, it's been really great. I, it's been growing every year and it's been so amazing being a part of it every, almost every single year. This year, they decided to change things up a bit and incorporate a drag king to the show for the first time. We like to just celebrate the different um, folks we have in our community and just celebrate the art and, and beauty of drag as well. Cal State Fullerton students were also given an opportunity to be part of the show. They went all out with wardrobe, hair, and makeup, and of course, their performance. This drag show highlighted some of the local talent within the OC and Long Beach area, and surprise, surprise, 
Half of their performers were Cal State Fullerton alumni. This is Kimberly Solis reporting for OC News. Coming up, we're celebrating Mickey and Minnie's birthday. That's right, Mickey and Minnie Mouse have the same birthday and are both turning 91 years old. Plus, after his kneel during the American Anthem at the football game in 2016, Colin Kaepernick sparks up some controversy over his latest workout. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change I could go back and change it all. If I could go back, I would. But I can't. Your son wants to get a cat, but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Just like cars, people need fuel, in the form of coffee, of course. I was lucky enough to cover an event that caters to car lovers and coffee lovers alike. Parking lot full of modified cars and shiny new paint jobs? What more could you want? Welcome to Cars and Coffee. Cars and Coffee is a car meet for car enthusiasts of all shapes and sizes. The meet takes place from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. every Saturday at the outlets at San Clemente. Conveniently, the meet is within walking distance of Starbucks, so you can get your coffee fix as well as your car fix. You can interact with other car lovers and view extraordinary cars while sipping a cup of joe. Better yet, anyone can participate. Bring your car or motorcycle, park, and let others envy your prized possession. Regulars of the meet have nothing but positive reviews for the unique gathering. It's just kind of a way to start your day in the morning and be able to come and, you know, of course, see unique cars and be able to have coffee as well. Just great people, and I think that um, it's a great atmosphere. You, you get to see everything. It's not just one. It's, there's more than supercars. There's more than muscle cars. There's, there's everything. Even mall employees enjoy the event, maybe a bit more than the attendees. I really do like cars and coffee. I love hot rods, always have. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to bring people to the outlets in the morning, show us who we are, where we are. Maybe we'll even open up a little early in the morning so we can get that traffic in here. Car expert or not, the community will welcome you with open arms. No matter your style, there's always something for you to enjoy. For OC News, I'm Rachel Andrews. The death of a young star shocked the baseball community. Plus, find out which NFL star is looking for a second chance. We go to our sports reporter, Alex Armstrong de Hoag, with the latest. Alex? It's a sad day in the sports world after the passing of Minnesota Twins prospect Ryan Costello. Costello, just 23 years old, was found dead in his New Zealand hotel room. According to team officials, he died in his sleep Monday, apparently of natural causes. His passing comes just a week after joining the Australian Baseball League, whose season is set to begin on Wednesday. The Minnesota Twins released a statement on Twitter that read, quote, We are saddened to learn of the untimely passing of Ryan Costello. The entire Twins organization sends our most sincere condolences to Ryan's family, friends, coaches, and teammates. Free agent quarterback Colin Kaepernick made a last-minute venue change for his scheduled NFL workout and allowed the media and press to be present. Seven NFL teams ended up attending the workout, with many wondering what the reasoning behind all of this was, considering Kaepernick has not worked out in front of NFL scouts since March of 2017 when he opted out of his contract before the 49ers released him. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a club baseball player at Cal State Fullerton? Our reporter Vincent Garcia got the opportunity to speak to one of their senior players to reflect on his experience. Jacob Babbitt is a pitcher for the Cal State Fullerton Club baseball team, a club that he would not have heard about if it wasn't for a friend of his. 
Uh, one day I was walking around campus and one of the guys who was actually on the team came up to me and uh, asked, I actually knew him beforehand from Fullerton College. So as a transfer student, I was kind of looking for an opportunity to continue playing. And he told me about club baseball and I thought it would be a cool opportunity to go out and continue to do what I love and that's play baseball. So I went out, tried out, made the team and here we are today. Even though Jacob gets the opportunity to play baseball, there are some challenges along the way by being a club athlete. It definitely has its pros and cons. I mean, obviously, we schedule around classes and stuff like that. So, um, but I mean, other than that, it's you know, you just got to find time to get stuff done. Late nights, that's expected. A lot of the challenges come with you know, we pay out of pocket most of the time for travel and stuff like that. So, kind of finding, kind of finding the funds as a team. We fundraise, do stuff like that. But again, you know, we just we're just out here to play baseball. So we're gonna do whatever we can to make sure we get that stuff done. Despite the challenges, he has enjoyed team bonding and great memories with the team. Trips to Arizona, you know, just uh, all the all the fun times we have out there, just being able to bond as a team and just playing competitive baseball, definitely. Team bonding is important for anything, just not club, baseball, any sport that you're a part of. You definitely want to have that family aspect and be a team out there because, you know, you can't do it by yourself. If you want to win a championship, you got to be a team. Even though it is his final year with the club, there is still a lot of focus in Jacob's eyes. He's out here to play baseball, so just keep playing and stuff like that, just looking towards the future. But right now, it's definitely focused on Cal State Fullerton Club Baseball and winning games. And his final words of advice to future club baseball players? Just enjoy the moment, enjoy the ride. It's go by, it goes by fast, but it's definitely a lot of fun. And if you get the opportunity, definitely come out and join the team. I'm Vincent Garcia for OC News. Thank you, Vincent, for that story. That's all we have for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Alex. Speaking about baseball, the City of Industry Sheriff Department has a youth program that offers free sports to kids. But how do they pay for it? Well, they fund these programs through community events. Our reporter, Vanya Patino, was able to talk to the mastermind behind the spookiest and most profitable, profitable event they host. Kids lining enough to walk into a jail cell? You don't hear that very often. But for the City of Industry, it's an annual tradition. For the past six years, the city sheriff station has created a haunted Halloween maze inside the jail cells. In just hours, the city jail room goes from soulless to full of dead souls. And this year, one of the jail cells will be decorated with pirate theme. We talked to the creator of one of these and all the other decorations. It's been like a family tradition ever since I was a little kid. Um, it's my my family's favorite holiday. Um, so we've always decorated like extreme decorations. On an empty lot behind his house, he makes simple skeletons come to life. From dead piranhas to evil mermaids, Wynn has used a simple method to create his gruesome characters. Even though it's like wrinkled or stuff, yeah. once you melt it, it kind of looks like veins. You know, trash bags, they're almost nothing. Um, and then just the tools, the only major tools that you'll need is a, a heat gun to melt the plastic. And then other than that, it's just a paint thinner, a silicone, which is like two bucks, and uh, paint. This is his third year participating in the Haunted Jail, which is used to fundraise money for the station's Youth Activity League. Decided, or he said, oh, that sounds like a blast. And uh, so I said, hey, well, would you like to become a volunteer? And um, he jumped right on it. It was kind of the unknown because he had all these really wild ideas and everything else. And I was thinking, oh, my God. Wow, this is going to be like Knott's Berry Farm. Wayne's love for Halloween was not the only thing that brought him to the program. My grandfather was one of the um, individuals that helped start the organization. Uh, the Sheriff's Department got together with a bunch of local businesses and um, they wanted to start a youth program. And what they do is they put, uh, the organization provides uh, sports programs for uh, underprivileged youth. This year, Wayne's nephew helped him out with a couple of the decorations, continuing to pass on the gift of volunteering and familiar love for Halloween. For OC News, I'm Bonnie Patino. Back to you guys. Very happy birthday to the animated icons, Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Today, both mice celebrate their 91st birthday. However, their birthday celebration is not about when the couple was born, but rather when they made their big debut in the animated film Steamboat Willie in New York on November 18th, 1928. The Hollywood Walk of Fame stars originally were named Mortar and Minerva before they were renamed to the mice we know and love today. In 1933, Walt Disney admitted privately that Mickey and Minnie are indeed married, now celebrating over nine decades of marital bliss. In fact, the voice actors of the iconic mice, Wayne Allwine and Rusty Taylor, were married in real life for three decades before they both sadly passed. 
You can celebrate the staple cartoon characters by watching the original Steamboat Willie or any other production featuring the two. Wow, I think it's so romantic that they're not only a couple in the animated series, but also in real life. I know, and just the impact those two characters have done over nine decades. Just wait till they make it to 100. Exactly, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope you had a magical time with us here at OC News. That's all we have for you today, Titans. Make sure you follow us under OC News CSUF and check out other programs like TechOn. I'm Gunnar Tech Sarah. And I'm Rachel Andrews. See you next time, Titans.